Hey y'all. So I randomly had this thought. I think it was Sunday and then I had the conversation with a friend yesterday, but I wanted to bring it to you all as well. And it was in regards to the reasons why marriages fail. So I'll start by asking the question, what are the top two reasons that you all have <clears throat> heard of marriages failing? So <clears throat> it was about to cough. So for me, I've always heard that marriages fail um, due to differences in finances, I guess how money is spent, um, and differences in sex. And what I thought was just interesting is that those are the two topics that are taboo to talk about. And I think that speaks a lot to the idea that the things that we don't address in childhood or the things you know, that we learn in childhood <clears throat> impact us as we grow older. So, you know, I don't know if it's because we don't talk about those things within our families, like we don't know how to communicate our needs in regards to those two things, or is it just that we kind of keep that same um, approach in terms of, yeah, I may not be happy in the bedroom or I may not like what you're doing with our finances, but because we don't talk about those things or or because we can't have honest conversations, I think that's the biggest, that's the bigger um, problem. We, we haven't learned how to have honest conversations about those things and they become problems that ultimately they become the very thing that breaks two people apart. And so I know some people may argue and say, well, why is it that <clears throat> two people can, you know, get a divorce and then they get remarried and that marriage is fine? And I think that may be because either one we learn from experience. So if I'm in a marriage and I know that we ended over finances, going into a new situation with the potential of marriage being there, I would then know that that's something that I need to be more open and honest about. And I'm probably more likely to communicate um, my deal breakers at that point because I'm like, you know what? This is my second go round at this. So I don't have that reservation in terms of, you know, um, expressing my needs or expressing the things that are important to me. Or two, it could be that <clears throat> maybe the two people that didn't work at first were just too similar in their approach to things um, in terms of, you know, maybe we had financial issues or we had issues with sex but i'm not gonna say nothing you're not gonna say nothing i'm dealing with my finances honestly the same way that you are but neither one of us has like a neither one of us has a more advanced understanding on that subject to then navigate things differently for us so in the second marriage maybe somebody has a bit um more knowledge about finances or you know or they're mo more open in their dialogue about sex. And so the change is made without there really being the necessity of um, like having those real in-depth conversations. Like maybe you, you all just click differently when it comes to those things. And then the weird thing too about <clears throat> the subject of sex being taboo. I don't know about, you know, what you and your friends talk about. But I know when me and my girls. It, and it's funny because I think men think that women don't talk about sex as much as they do and I'm willing to I'm willing to bet that women probably talk about sex just as much if not more than men do ask your home girls men you know many of y'all got home girls ask them and I guarantee you like we talk about sex just as much as you all do we have the same desires you know desire for sex that y'all do but Again, it's crazy that we have those communicate we have those conversations amongst ourselves, but then like I know people that are very they can be very open and honest about, you know, what they would prefer to be different in their relationship as far as their sex is concerned, as far as sex is concerned, but they don't have those conversations with their partner. And so that just goes to show like um you know, it it's it is hard to have those conversations I imagine in relationships, but that also supports the fact that the lack of communication the lack of um you know the lack of communication is ultimately what um causes things to go downhill and so <clears throat> i often think about you know when i become a parent how i may handle those situations differently and i don't know because i feel like it wasn't until i got older that i really had like I could really have those conversations with my parents about, you know, how much money they make or 
that type of thing and <clears throat> while I don't know their reasoning I don't know a parent's reason for not telling kids that when they're younger one because it's not like kids really have an understanding of what that number means like you know kids think $25 is a lot it's like oh shit $25 let me go buy out the store which we know is not reality but <clears throat> I don't know if it's because they're afraid of the, the kid telling somebody else but then I don't know I really don't have the answer to that maybe that's something I ask my mom and see what she has to say about it but I I really don't understand it I don't understand why those topics are so taboo but I really hope that I can kind of change the narrative as far as that's concerned and just teach my child the importance of like being like financial literacy and and I, again I have so much to learn about that but I hope that um, I'll be able to teach them that and have talks about sex like sex I feel like we are taught to believe that sex is just this bad thing um, and that's another important point to make too like I know people who have waited until marriage to have sex but then and I mean that's their choice I'm not saying that to say you shouldn't but I'm saying my point being that and then when they've gotten married it's almost like they were so uncomfortable in having sex even though they did it the right way so to say because they have been shunned so much about having desires for sex outside of marriage if that makes sense um so those are just it's interesting to think about it's very interesting to think about how the two things that we in my experience in the experience of people that i know the two things that we are quick to say no we don't talk about that or we don't acknowledge those things the two things that we don't talk about are the things that cause the most problems in terms of being able to be compatible with another person in our adulthood that's interesting um but i would love to hear feedback about this topic and what your views on it are um <clears throat> again i just hope that i can change the narrative and i hope by us having these discussions that it may prompt you know some of you to also kind of change the narrative because you know it's our job now to educate those that are coming behind us and to hopefully create a better space for them in terms of how they grow up how our children grow up and their contributions to the world and I'm definitely somebody I still for the most part believe in marriage um but I think I believe in marriage in terms of it being how can I explain this? <clears throat> like my desire for marriage is just to be doing life with my best friend. Like I don't I don't want marriage to be complicated. Like, you know, people say marriage is you signing your life away, this, that, and the third. Like I don't want that to be my experience. I just want, you know, to be doing life with my best friend. Like I like you enough to say, you know what, you the person that I want to do life with for the rest of my life. I don't I don't want it to be anything other than that i mean now don't get me wrong we have to have compatibility on other areas but i'm saying at the core of the reason why we get married i need it to be because we just like we f with each other like that like we are best friends i don't want to be no crazy in love none of that like that's just too much that's too much and i've just outgrown um i've outgrown like that i guess that's romanticized i guess i've outgrown it depending on your definition of romanticizing because I do believe that somebody ha should have standards and I definitely have standards but some people may argue that if you desire your partner to look a certain way that means that you are go going after like lustful characteristics or characteristics characteristics that would drive feelings of lust opposed to the person that you're most compatible with but I mean I know the type of guy that I desire but I also know the characteristics within him that are definitely like important to me and that would be deal breakers if he didn't possess those things um but i feel like i'm getting off topic so i will end here but again i want to hear your thoughts on this and i know i have some friends that watch my videos and then they'll call and we'll talk about it and that's fine I'm like we can keep doing that it's fine y'all um but i would love to see some commentary in the comments below just so we can have some dialogue amongst ourselves um collectively but I will talk to you all soon in my next video.